Welcome to another video. This week, we're going to learn how to write a typical Hollywood adventure theme. This is the kind of music that you'll hear as the main theme of movies about long adventures or journeys. In other words, we're going to learn a template for writing music that sounds like this. So the first thing we need to address is that typical adventure themes actually consist of two shorter themes put together, a theme A and a theme B. Now, theme A is your typical heroic action theme, while theme B is a much more complex and contrasting idea. The general idea here is that every adventure theme starts out in safe, heroic waters. Then they'll explore a secondary theme with much more convoluted harmony, chromatic melodies, and more interesting orchestration, before ending the whole thing by arriving back at home at theme A once more. When combined, you create a simple ABA structure that works together to create the typical adventurous theme. Now, fortunately for us, both themes tend to share similar guidelines when it comes to tempo and rhythm. You'll want to stick with simple meters, things like 4-4 four, four, and 3-4 time, while using a medium to fast tempo, somewhere between 100 to 140 beats per minute. Our example was written in 4-4 four, four time, at a tempo of 120 beats per minute. Now, harmony is where the two themes begin to diverge. I mentioned earlier that theme A is your stereotypical heroic theme. There's nothing too special here. You'll just want to stick to a major key and use mostly just triads. Theme B is where things start to get a little more interesting. You have a lot more freedom here. The only real guideline is that it must be in a different key from theme A. The safest option is to just move to the next key over in the circle of fifths. For example, our theme A was in C major. Theme B just moved one to the left to be in F major. Now honestly, this is more than enough to really mark the two themes as being different. However, you are encouraged to try different strategies to make your theme be more interesting. Maybe you want to try writing in a minor key. Maybe you'll use tertian harmony. Or maybe, like me, you'll borrow chords from the parallel modes. The only real guideline here is that you cannot do the same thing that you did for theme A. Having two contrasting harmonic ideas in your music is how you create a literal sense of adventure in this genre. In our example, I did start with the key of F major, but I borrowed three chords from F Lydian to create a more whimsical and adventurous feeling. If you're interested in learning more interesting harmonic strategies like borrowed chords, I encourage you to check out my playlist on harmony for composers. But for now, let's move on to melodies. Once again, the primary goal here is to create contrasting melodic ideas for each theme. Now, that's not to say that there won't be some similarities. This is heroic music after all. So both themes will tend to use dotted rhythms and potentially triplets. However, their general shapes will be different. Typically, theme A will follow the same conventions we saw in our video for majestic themes. You'll stick to mostly just chordal tones and use plenty of large leaps. In particular, perfect fourths, perfect fifths, and octaves are the most common. Now, if we look at my melody for theme A, you'll see right away that it consists almost entirely of large leaps. The primary motif is just essentially an arpeggio of the underlying chord that uses both a triplet and a dotted quarter note. In fact, we don't see any stepwise movement or non-chordal tones until beat two of the second measure, where it does move by step to an E, but then immediately leaps back down a perfect fifth to an A. Now, theme B is again a completely different story. Here, it moves almost entirely by step, with only a single leap of a third in the second measure. At the end, we do have a much more heroic series of leaps, but this serves more as a transition back to theme A than as an actual motif from theme B. You may also notice that the interesting harmonic choices I used for theme B allowed me to use some chromaticism in the melody as well. Throughout the phrase, I used both B flat, which comes from F major, and B natural, which is from F Lydian. This helps give a much more energetic and exotic sound to the melody, and is one of the main reasons why it's important to take some liberties with your harmony. 
Now, finally, the very last thing to address is orchestration. And this is pretty straightforward for the most part. Theme A will typically use very large instrumentation. You'll have woodwinds, strings, and plenty of brass instruments. The only special thing here is that the melody will typically be played by a single instrument for the entire phrase, usually the trumpets or the horns. Theme B, once again, is a little more nuanced. The brass will typically drop out entirely, and the melody will bounce around to different woodwinds, with the strings offering support. The very last thing to keep in mind is that each theme will also use very different textures. As a reminder, texture refers to the number and types of layers used in your music. For example, the most typical texture for theme A is melody plus chords plus bass line. The typical texture for theme B is melody plus counter melody plus bass line. In our example, theme A has the trumpets on melody, trombones on the chords, and then low voices on the bass line. The woodwinds are also adding some ear candy, but that's optional. Theme B bounces the melody around to different woodwind instruments, with the violins offering support to each of them. The violas are then performing the counter melody alone, and the celli are playing the bass line. Now, your counter melody does not need to be too complicated, or follow the same rules as the primary melody. In general, you can just use basic counterpoint to write it. Now, if you're not familiar with counterpoint, I recommend checking out my video in the description for a quick crash course. So with all of this information in mind, let's listen to our example one more time. And while we listen, I'll include some notes on the screen to point out how the template is being used. And with that, we have reached the end of another video. Now, templates like this one can be super useful, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you need to write a Hollywood adventure style theme. However, they are cliche for a reason. You should never rely entirely on a template when you're trying to write interesting and original music. Once again, I wanna thank my wonderful patrons for their support. This week, a special thank you goes out to my newest patrons, Jack and Yaw. I'm grateful to have you on the team. I also want to say thank you to all of you who show your support through the many kind and supportive comments, emails, and messages that I received. I appreciate each and every one of you. So until next time, keep studying, keep working hard, and keep writing new music.